Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. On the COVID-19 front, Monday saw Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony confirming an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases in Guyana. The spike started at the end of December and led to 485 new cases. We suspect that we might have the Omicron variant that is in circulation in Guyana. Because based on the, these um, numbers, um, we know that in other countries with Omicron, it's highly contagious. So the numbers would keep multiplying every uh, two to four days, you will have an increase in these numbers. And so with the way that this has rapidly progressed over the last couple of days, we suspect from an epidemiological point of view that we might have Omicron that is in circulation here. The minister urged the public to practice the gazetted measures such as sanitizing, physical distancing, and wearing masks correctly. Persons are being encouraged to wear surgical masks or N95 or K95 masks, which offers better protection than the cloth masks. As the new week went by, more COVID-19 cases were recorded. Minister Anthony pleaded with citizens to follow the guidelines, but also reminded them that not wearing masks in public, in particular, can land them in trouble. If people refuse to wear the mask, according to the gazetted regulations, it is, a um, it is an offense, and one can be fined for not wearing that mask. So I'm sure that the police and the joint services through Operation COVID Curb would be able to enforce some of this. And I guess in the height of all of this surge in cases, we we'll probably have to make some people an example. He also noted that his ministry has since issued N95 masks to all healthcare facilities across the country to better protect the frontline workers against the Omicron variant. Moving to the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport, Minister Charles Ramson Jr. earlier this week launched the Badminton Nursery to develop younger athletes interested in the sport. We're going to be monitoring what's happening here uh, very rigidly to see how it's unfolding and how it can get the kind of support so that it expands. Um, you are the, the early starters of the program. This is going to grow into a lot more young people like yourself. And uh, it's also going to expand into other regions. After being away from face-to-face -face learning for almost two years, children were finally able to return to the classroom on Monday. Going into 2022, we intend to vigorously get back to a level of normalcy that we have still not been able to do. So except we are otherwise advised by the Ministry of Health, all students from grades 8 to 12 to 13 will be expected to go back to school full-time. The students from grades 8 to 13 have all been offered and have been given five months to get vaccinated. The bridges at Dennis Street and Eastern Highway and Dennis Street and Stone Avenue are set to be completed ahead of schedule. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Agil on Friday inspected both bridges, which were previously in deplorable conditions. Work began um, by the middle of December, uh, re replacing timber piles and timber structures with concrete in its entirety, concrete piles, concrete beams, and concrete surface. Last night, they poured the concrete um, for the decking. And as you can see, they're putting some sand on the concrete. That is to help with the curing process so that we'll be able to get this bridge open. Uh, we anticipate within two weeks, I'm here on site today, first week in January, and this will be completed. We're ahead of the 
expected schedule, they should be ready to opening within another week. Uh, uh, week, week maximum. This is a $34.6 million um, contract that went to DEFCOM. When that bridge of the Eastern Highway was collapsed, this one was in a very deplorable condition. All the traffic of people trying to head north to south had to end up going all the way out to Sherry Street and there was some concern and um, some inconvenience. But safety was a big issue and that's why we had to close off these bridges. But I'm happy to report to the nation that even though there was an inconvenience, you're getting it back brand new for another 50, 60 years. One of the reasons why I'm on the road today is to ensure that everybody is at work and all of our projects are moving apace. There is no slacking up. Guyana's development is too important for people to be on Christmas and New Year's vacation. So we're ensuring that all the rollover projects, and this is a signal to all the contractors. Meanwhile, the preparatory works for the beautification of the Kingston Seawall waterfront will be completed within a week. This will then pave the way for other aspects of the beautification project, which is the brainchild of First Lady, Her Excellency Arya Ali. Right now, what, what, what should be happening is a wrap-up. Um, we've had some slight delays. They should have been finished by December 31st, but it's a wrap-up. And I've just told Mr. Um, Braffitt, all the contractors must start cleaning up. This space is too important to be left with construction waste. New projects will be awarded to continue to enhance what is happening out here, to bring it to its finality. But the works of 2021 are largely 98% um, completed. As we wrap up, we leave you with some scenes of First Lady Arya Ali's visit to the maternity ward of the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation on New Year's Day. Today's event brings us new beginnings and I am more than happy to be here to celebrate with our eight moms and their newborn babies. Let us be reminded that we are still in a pandemic, so we need to continue to sanitize, wear our masks and social distance. And for who has not been yet vaccinated, please do. And re please be reminded for who did to get their booster shots. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.